In this episode, I want to share with you my latest experience with ayahuasca. Okay, so first thing first, talking about the ayahuasca or yaje, so you know what it is. It's basically a mixture of plants, so it's like a purgative um, preparation from the traditional indigenous medicine. And I did it in Colombia, so it would be from the Colombian, what they call the putumayo. It's actually physical, integral, mental, and spiritual. She's the cat. Hello! I'm currently cat sitting, so this is a Nix, a French cat. When you take it, it's made of two plants. You've got the ayahuasca vine, which is called, and I'm going to read this because I'm not so good with those names. It's Binesti Uriopsis capi. I'm going to leave it on screen as well if you can read about it. Um, and the other one is called Chacruna or Psychotria virilis, which contain basically the hallucinogen DMT. And in many countries, obviously, like the US, this is prohibited and it's illegal. So usually the shaman who organize the ceremony or curandero is going to be preparing it. So the way they do it is they basically boil it and they make it super concentrated and potent. The reason why they do that is that you're going to take like, it looks like a shot when they give it to you. And it's concentrated, it's very bitter and it's literally just the kind of like juice of the plants like you're not actually like it's not a smoothie right so you're just drinking like that very bitter kind of drink and they usually serve it like the size of a shot and you just shut it down like this and then you drink it during the ceremony the medicinal compounds i'm just the worst spot to do this video but it's okay we're here it's part of like the life in the jungle you get the sounds and the wind and everything else so now, the effects on your mind and your body. So many people that have taken ayahuasca said that it led to lots of changes, usually positive. It's a trip that affects your neurological system. You can, in a way, again, I'm no doctor, but there are studies around it that say that it just opens and changes some connectors in your brain. So it leads to long-term effects that can be positive. And I'd say that what I've experienced, like for me, it was a change. I feel like it's probably opened up new ways of thinking that I didn't have before having this experience. So it was overall positive for me. Again, it's not because my own personal experience was that way, that is the way for everyone. I think you need to feel the calling of the plants, that's what they usually say. It's like, this is not a game, it's medicinal. Um, so you would probably need to have reasons to want to do it. I feel like curiosity or just for the fun of it is not enough. You need to feel deeply connected and want to do it and have like that calling um, to experience it. I would probably not recommend you to do it if you're not sure or you don't really know why you actually want to do it. Now, what to expect during an ayahuasca ceremony? So different ceremonies are for different people. Mine was a certain way, it's so always the same way, but most of the time you get a shaman and they usually have a circle. So it could be inside or outside of both. Mine had a fire, so you could congregate around the fire you could congregate inside. They had musicians, so they had people playing music during the ceremony. The shaman was there, he had his crew. We had a doctor that supervised the experience as well, so they're able to see if someone is feeling really badly, but not because of the medicine, because they're just feeling bad. Then someone is here to help them get through it and assist them. And usually those people know how to detect the difference between you purging and you actually feeling really sick and really bad or needing exorcism. And I'm going to get into that 
a bit later. Before you do it, just find a very good shaman. I know that I ended up meeting this woman in Colombia. I met her because I was doing some content creation for a charity and she was leading the session to help girls tap into their feminine energy and she was doing an event around that so we connected she told me she was a doctor and then she was also helping with ayahuasca ceremonies or yahe and then told me all about it told me about the shaman that comes from the south of colombia he's one of the best shamans in colombia he also travels and he's habilitated to travel because some shamans are not allowed to travel with the medicine he is so she recommended also the ceremony so she said some ceremonies are more into like the masculine energy, this one was a lot more soft in a woman like and it was just one night because you could do it for one night or you could do it for one week while I was there they had one that was from Monday to Friday so this one was like a week long but I decided to do it just for the Saturday night to Sunday so just once because I wanted to experience it first before I go into like a week of doing ayahuasca and then they had like temasca and then all sorts for, for the ones that were doing it for a week and for me it was too much given it was my first experience I just thought I want to ease into it see what it's like see how my body reacts see the kind of effects I'm going to experience because I had no idea like I've never done it before I'm the no one to take drugs again no offense if you do each to their own but for me it was it was my first time experiencing anything like this so I was I was scared like I'm not gonna lie it's something scary Everyone tells you about their bad, good experiences. So I feel like, again, you can listen to what people say, but until you experience it for yourself, don't let other people experience renewals or dictates whether you're going to do it or not. You should feel the want to do it. And if that calling is strong and you feel like you're ready and you want to experience it, then you should do it. But again, try not to listen to other people. I think, yeah, the main thing is you need to do it with someone that knows someone that can look after you it's a safe environment a safe experience so i wouldn't just take it alone i think having a shaman and a crew around you know the music part is very important because they feel the, the energy in the room and when people are struggling they start playing music to try and help people and get together they assist people because most people we coach so that's something you need to know so you might go to the bathroom chop or you might vomit, which happens a lot of the time. So most people, as I was doing it, were very sick around me. I did not get sick, which I was very surprised about because I was also worried about that. I've got like fear of vomiting. So for me, that was like the thing. I was like, I don't want to vomit and I'm hoping I'm not going to vomit. Nothing happened. I did not witness either, but most people do. So that's something you need to be aware of because it might happen to you. So you need to be prepared for that. Also for me, I find that what helped was the fact that there was a bonfire. So that was really soothing. And they say again, they warned us that if we were feeling bad, the bonfire was here to help us. So again, listen to the advice, but they have to say, I feel like you need to have that circle, especially if it's your first time. I wouldn't recommend doing that alone with friends or you know, in circumstances where if you're feeling bad, you've got no one around that can help you and knows how to. At the end of the day, your ayahuasca trip will lead to an altered state of consciousness. It can last for many hours. Usually ceremonies are done at night. Um, again, if you did a week long, it could be done during the day. This have sometimes twice in one day, if you do it for a week. Mine was at midnight, we started, before we took the medicine people that never took it before went first which I was like I don't know if I want to go first and then you have to wait for around 40 to 60 minutes for the medicine to kick in and start feeling the effects again if you don't feel the effects they say that wait for an hour or two if you don't feel like anything go to the shaman ask for another round and then they would give it to you drink again wait for an hour see if that does anything if it doesn't then take another one for me, I just took one. I decided to just take one. I found that I had a soft kind of experience probably uh, when I talked again to other people. Again, I asked before my intention was for the medicine, what they call the Pachamama, to be gentle and take care of me because I was I was very worried. Like I, I just wanted to have a probably ease into it and an nice experience, and that's what happened for me. So I took my first shot. Then I remember my heart was racing because I was so scared. I felt like my breathing became completely out of control, and I was like, "Am I having a panic attack? What is this? This is 
the mini scene. Is it me freaking out? It was just me freaking out. So I sat down, went back to my seat. Then I started breathing into it. I do breath work. So I was doing like some breathing exercises to calm down, then calm down. And I was very tired as when well. I'm not doing really well at staying up at night. So I remember like starting to fall asleep like this on my seat and then all of a sudden the medicine kicked in. I remember I was like half asleep and all of a sudden it took me and I could feel it from my legs going up, up, up to my body, up to my brain. And at that point, I almost felt like I was about to become unconscious. Like I felt like I was going and like, I don't know, I felt like that was taking over pretty much. And then I remember that they say, if you feel bad, we were inside at that point and they say if you feel bad just walk outside to the fire and you would feel better the fire look at the fire it helps like soothe whatever you feel so i did i don't know i snapped when i felt that i was like i need to do something snapped i opened my eyes i, I stood up i remember standing up and then i walked straight to the fire like a, like a zombie and then i was trying to feel do i want to zombie do I feel like I have there? Yep, no, I feel okay. Okay, I can keep going because the toilet's on the way. I was trying to like judge. Then outside, so on one side you had the bonfire and then on the other side you had the vomiting area, which is awful. So I ended up sitting, they had like the chairs in a circle. So I sat there, started staring at the fire and then the flashes started to come. The trip started literally. And I was getting visions for family members messages so kind of like guidance and then memories would come back as well but slowly thing and then at first i was like am i ever thinking am i making this up is it in my head like am i just am i controlling things and then i was like no you need to stop thinking let it come at you and then i felt like the medicine was obviously kicking in and then i just shut the voices in my head and start start listening to the medicine and the messages and then all around Bill you know like I had lots of people with me I was not just alone some people were losing it some people were over there I remember like vomiting everything you could hear them some people were going to the toilets some people were like I remember one girl they had to assist her at some point because she was like going like this like she felt really bad like almost possessed and so they were massaging her time, never yeah, it helps. So they were helping her. Then they were like poking her whenever she needed to vomit. So that was the start of my trip. Then all these messages kept on going. And then at one point they just stopped. And I was trying to see if I could like get some more. Nothing would happen. At that point I stood up, came back to the room. I had a friend with me and they were like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I feel fine now. And they're like, you need another one. But then I thought, Yes, maybe, but I had a very nice trip. I just saw what I wanted to see. Do I really need to take another one and maybe feel really bad and have a bad experience? So I personally decided that I was okay with what I see. I had the answers and I didn't feel like I needed another one. But then I started experiencing what everyone else was feeling and seeing because I was like sobered up, if I may say it that way. So basically on the right hand side, I remember the shaman was there. So I was sitting, everyone had a mat, kind of like a meditation mat. And I saw that they were doing exorcism on someone. So they were literally with their plants, like just obviously talking in their own kind of like language and messages and just like doing exorcism on a guy that seemed like he was going through a lot. Some other people were dancing, they were playing music. Some people were at the bonfire. Some people were going completely like screaming and crying and everyone was in their own trip and journey. Again, you know, from one person to another, you don't know what to expect. The only thing I'd say that you need to take care of is what you're going to do to prepare for it. So what they told me, so I thought, I need to go perfectly vegan, but with them they were like, no, we can have chicken and fish, just don't have red meat. And I found that out, I had red meat on the Saturday night, and on Sunday she told me that, and then the next Saturday I did it. So I didn't have red meat for a week, but some people prepare for a month, right? So again, listen to whatever they have to say. So no red meat, no processed sugar no sex or alcohol usually you have to avoid anything citrusy because it cancels out the effects 
of the yaki. So that's not because you're going to feel bad, but it's just more because it cancels out. Same goes for onions and garlic, so avoid that at least three days before the ceremony. And no cow's milk and technically no coffee. So I'm going to tell you what I've done again. The, that's the recommendation. For me, I decided to go completely vegan three days before it. I usually drink a lot of natural lemonade. Being in kind of like these countries, I love it. Again, it's a lot of citrus, so I stopped that two to three days before. The only thing I did not stop is coffee. I love coffee and it's kind of like the thing where on the day I had one coffee in the morning, but then I had it early and then I did not drink any caffeine after that. I'm not the type to eat processed sugar, so that was not a thing. And then, yeah, the meat and fish, I stopped it three days before. And again, I had only chicken and fish before that. The last time I had red meat was the Saturday prior. So in terms of the diet, that's what I did. I'm single, so the sex part was not an issue. Um, I don't smoke, I don't take any medication. The only thing is I was doing a gut protocol, so I got worried because I did not stop my gut protocol, but because it was homeopathy, it was fine. But again, preferably just stop taking any medication just in case. And yeah, no, no other drugs or alcohol or things like that. It's preferable that you're clean before you go into this experience. And from what I've heard, people that did not respect that or had milk and, you know, like a, a sweet dessert with like a lot of milk and... I've heard like stories where they got very sick and when they had a clean diet, they had a good experience. Because I met people there that did it a few times, so they were able to tell me what they felt like, what they experienced, because every time you might have a different trip, depending on your state of mind, what you've consumed, how you go into it, your intentions, the stress levels, a lot of things. So you want to prepare as best as you can, because the idea is, well, if you need to clear things up, you will clear things up. Uh, suffering because you had a poor diet with DBT. So yeah, that's just a piece of advice. So preparation is key. And during the ceremony, I also had water. You're allowed to drink a little bit of water. This drink is horrible, like it's not a drink, it's a shot. So think of like a green shot, but super bitter, and it stays in your mouth forever. Like I felt like until, yeah, even two days later, I was still like having the taste in my mouth. So that was not nice. So I brought water with me because I was like, this is horrible. Like I feel like my breath is disgusting. So you feel like you're more open and more sensitive to noises, or to people, to energies like I don't know it feels like your heart is open and you're catching everything so we decided to go to the carnaval in Barranquilla after this and for me it was too much too much noise too much people too much energy I felt like I needed just time to relax and be in nature and reconnect and process everything journal take my time sleep eat good food relax being quiet in environments that's what I was craving afterwards so if you have the possibility again maybe have some time for yourself after the ceremony because you don't know what you're going to be like and feel like so it's good to have that time to be with yourself and sit with your thoughts and perhaps be away from you know the craziness of a big city or just lots of interaction and distraction and going back to your normal life straight away it's good to have a bit of time to yourself to be able to process it all so last bit of advice from me is if you're thinking of doing it just make sure you take care a lot of places now are doing it for commercial reasons so you want to find a place that's going to be as authentic as possible the shaman that is going to be you know trained and recognized for generations because that's what they do they're usually in remote areas and just come for this i prefer having a doctor on site just so if people feel bad you also know how to take care of yourself and people around and overall you need to trust right so you need to feel like the environment is also a nice environment to do it at do the diet and make sure you do your research before you go into it so you know what you set yourself up for if you would like to see more on this topic or have more questions feel free to comment below um, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel and don't forget to subscribe i apply videos every week on different topics 
thanks for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it would help you on your journey take care and i'll see you guys in the next one bye